One of the most fascinating stories and, and my, one of the most tragic stories is um, Roger Beaujolais, who was a rocket specialist at Morton Thiokol, which was the contractor in Utah that, that built the rockets. Um, and he was one of the most adamant of the, the day before the launch took place that it should not happen. Um, and that was because he was one of the people at the company who understood the way the joints in the rockets worked the best. Um, and almost exactly a year before Challenger lifted off, he had seen examples of the, of the O-rings that he had taken out of a launch that had taken place in January 1985 and been recovered afterwards. And what he found there was what they called erosion, which was holes being drilled in the, the O-rings by hot jets of gas um, to the point where they could approach failure. And the erosion in these rockets in January 85 was worse than any that he'd ever seen before. So he was absolutely aghast when he saw this. And initially was kind of bewildered by why it was so much worse than anything he'd seen over the previous four years. But then he worked out that the launch had taken place in what was then the coldest weather in Florida history. There was this cold snap that swept down the eastern seaboard. And so he thought that the rings were especially susceptible to cold weather. And this is one of the things that prompted him to, to really go to work on his managers to try and to get, get them to seriously address these problems. And initially, he just couldn't get their attention. But had begun to make progress by the end of 1985. He wrote a memo. I remember right. that. That worked. That helped. <laughs> um, and, uh, and he warned that what he was worried about was that, that if these problems kept getting worse, then the shuttle would just explode on the launch pad one day, and they'd lose all of the crew and the launch pad and everything with it. Um, but even so, even though he had these very serious concerns, at no point did he say explicitly, you should stop launching this thing until we fix these O-ring problems. And the reason for that was because he was convinced that this had happened in 1985 because it was the coldest weather in Florida history, which was regarded at the time as a once in a hundred year event. So he, like all the other engineers at Thiokol, was pretty confident that, you know, given another 100 years, they were going to be able to work out a way of fixing these joints before another weather event like that happened. So although he was, he was worried about it and, and he kind of experienced each launch as a source of extreme anxiety, he was still confident that they could keep flying for long enough, safely enough, that they'd be able to fix the problem before anything bad went, anything went catastrophically wrong. Um, and so he wasn't really paying that much attention to the Challenger launch until the day before when he got news that it was going to be the coldest weather in Florida history. And his reaction was, what do you mean? We had the coldest weather in Florida history that was supposed to be a once in a century event last year. And now it's 12 months later and it's going to happen again. It's like a lot colder. Right. So, so at that point, Beaujolais you know, was absolutely determined to make sure that that the shuttle didn't launch. And he convinced his bosses that they should, they should make a no-go recommendation for launch, which is exactly what they did that night in a special teleconference that they called at the last minute. But then, as a result of exactly the kind of commercial pressure that you're talking about, NASA's managers made it clear to the guys at Morton Thiokol that they weren't going to be very happy if this much-delayed launch was going to be delayed again on account of these damned O-rings in the solid rockets.